let me take a couple minutes first and introduce our panelists to everybody with a little bit more detail. I know that they were mentioned earlier, but I would like to mention that um, uh, with Papetui Mukamasinga, known as Queen P, we're so pleased to have her with us. We have royalty on our panel, which is just so exciting. And I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, but uh, she works with Sustainable Harvest. And, you know, she's really a wonderful person to have on our panelists, on our panel. Uh, Queen, Queen P, we're happy that you're with us because you do so much training work in the farm areas with women. And it's just incredible. So I know that you're going to give us a very real and um, um, wonderful or a clear understanding of what's happening in in Rwanda and other parts of Africa and, and what's being done now. So it's great that you're on board with us. Okay. Also. Okay. okay yeah. Thanks so much, Damien. Oh, oh you're and, welcome. And thank you for Abbas, uh, for your initiative uh, to host and to organize this jump event. So, uh, the question was, uh, what I'm going to discuss is the challenges or the problem were brought uh, on by yeah. COVID-19. Right. Okay. Well, pretty soon I'll get to you. Just a second. I just want to continue into introducing that. We have Carl Weinhold with us also, founder of Cedro uh, Alto Coffee in Colombia. And this is just excellent. Carl, nice to see you. And Hello, I love Thank your, you. you're welcome. I love your project because what you do is just excellent with working with smaller farmers, upgrading their coffee, getting it to port. And it's, it's a big project. So we'll be, I'm looking forward to listening to from, uh, hearing from you very shortly. Also, there is Edgar Bassani, who's well, well known in the coffee world and, um, an ambassador of coffee, look at that, all the way from Brazil. And it's wonderful to have you with us. He works, uh, Edgar works with small farmers and farms of all sizes and the Capricornio coffee and the whole range of coffee from seed all the way to export, which is just incredible. So we're gonna have a very good understanding of what's happening in that part of the world also. Also, Thank uh, you, Damian. you're welcome, Edgar, it's just great. Edgar, we have, um, Ezequiel Batista, good friend of mine in Panama. And he also works with small farms. He owns one as well as family in the community. What's good about, uh, another thing that's great about uh, Ezequiel is that he manages a larger farm with the dry mill for exporting also with Badu Black Mountain. And thanks to the wonderful people in Badu Black Mountain, the owners and, and Ezequiel, it makes possible the exporting of coffees from smaller farms, such as my project, so far away, it makes it possible to get our coffee out of the country. So, Ezekiel, thanks for your hard work. Things are moving. So that's our panelists. Now we do have a small list of, um, of questions, and we're looking forward to hearing these answers. So, I just have my list. <laughs> okay, so the first question, and I guess we'll start off with the Queen P. okay? is if you could explain to us what challenges or problems were brought on by COVID-19 in Rwanda, Queen P, what can you tell us? Okay, the challenges or the problem were brought by uh, COVID-19. You know, sustainable growers work with uh, Rwandan women cooperatives so uh, the first challenges was the cooperative members are expected to carry out farming activities each day. So most of them working in the group. Due to the social distance rules, group of farming cannot work together. So instead, only one farmers can work in their area at that time. So this, this social distance uh, was decreased activity level, bring down daily uh, productivity level for the cooperatives. That was uh, the first challenges uh, we have met. 
uh, with our cooperatives. Uh, the other challenges was uh, the coffee cherries are transported from farm prod to the coffee washing station using uh, the plastic bucket. So before COVID-19, farmers would find uh, the motorcycle or bicycle to help them transport the cherries. Because of the social distance and transport regulation, the only option was uh, to carry their cherries uh, uh, by head, carry those basket and deliver to the washing stations. And of course, they was walking and using uh, their feet. So the third one, the third one, like the biggest challenge we have met, some coffee washing station uh, was struggled to get working capital. Because of some bank branch uh, near cooperatives closed at the starting of the harvesting area. And the, so here, uh, because of that lockdown in the beginning of, uh, of March, most of the branches in the rural area was closed because of uh, the policies. So with raw money was remitted, the farmers were not allowed to withdraw over 1 million in Rwandan money francs per day. So it was a challenge considering coffee washing station cash flow per day during the coffee harvesting and processing season. Okay, well, that's certainly quite a lot. So thank you for sharing that with us. And we'll be back with you, to you pretty soon. So right now, let's hear what ha what's happening in Colombia. Carl, what can you tell us about the challenges or problems brought on by COVID? Sure. Uh, again, speaking only to the, the situation that, that I've seen personally in, in Colombia, mostly in the central, west, and south of, of the country, uh, there have been some of the, the same issues that others have been seeing elsewhere in the world. Uh, it's difficult for pickers to arrive to, to the farms. Uh, because we're in, in the high harvest right now in a lot of areas and, and pickers that normally come from other parts of the country uh, aren't around. This is of course mitigated by the, the lack of employment in the small towns and in you know, areas near where farming is happening. So a lot of people that work in stores and restaurants and things are, are going up to farms. So this has, this has softened the impact of the, of the picker shortage in a lot of areas. We've heard of some cases where the price of picking has, has increased, but, but not in all. Um, there have been some alarm bells sounding about this, but uh, and at least my personal contacts have, have found that it's been um, you know, marginal, the, the impact. Uh, transportation has been difficult. Some of the prices of transportation have been increasing. Um, some, some of the timing issues have been, have been strange because farmers are, are Harvesting, they need to sell immediately for cash flow reasons, but then sometimes transportation isn't available. And uh, I've also been hearing that food prices for, uh, you know, for some farmers depend more on purchased food than others. Uh, but the food prices have been, been high also because of the transportation issues. But really these problems in comparison to other problems we've seen other years, um, I mean, they, they could be worse, to be honest. Uh, at, this may be a controversial opinion, but I'm going to propose that the, the real impact and problems for producers are not yet being felt. Uh, the, the spread of, of coronavirus is, uh, has, been, has been slower getting into secluded re rural areas. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that develops um, in, in most of the small towns where, where our partners are working. Uh, there have not been a lot of cases. Maybe there will be later on. Maybe they'll be able to avoid it mostly we'll see and um you know really i think the the market is is what could potentially cause big problems down the road so right now uh the commodity price locally here in colombia is extraordinarily high it has been for the last two two and a half months uh of course it's it's gone down a little bit um but it's still quite good farmers are selling commodity at in the commodity market for prices well above production cost and that's because of, uh, of 
one, the physical differential for, for Colombian mild Arabica, and two, the, the stark uh, devaluation of the Colombian peso, mostly due to the, the oil price drop. Uh, so, in, so farmers selling in Colombian pesos are earning quite a lot of Colombian pesos for any quality. So a lot are selling wet coffee so that they don't earn it. Just um, as a reference, most farmers are doing their own wet milling, they're doing their own depulping and fermentation here, and some are drying some of the time. Um, but right now, there's, there's an incentive to sell wet coffee, even though the price is lower, just to uh, take advantage of high prices. Um, so that's, that's great for farmers, but uh, there's very little interest in producing specialty coffee right now because of the high price for commodity coffee. So on one hand, why bother? And on the other hand, uh, high-end specialty demand is, is uh, pretty soft right now for a lot of exporters, including for, for our own group. Um, so that's, that's fine. Farmers aren't selling at a loss, even though the New York sea price is, is quite low. Um, but my concern is that if people take the year off of specialty, they'll lose uh, the consistency with their buyers, the roasters and other parts of the world that are, in, that are counting on enjoying their coffee year in and year out if they don't produce it this year because you know, there's no real financial incentive to do so. Uh, those roasters are gonna find somebody else to buy from. And then next year, what's the situation going to be? Maybe we're back to, to business as usual. Selling into the commodity market is largely unprofitable but then all those roasters will have already found somebody else to source from. Uh, so, so I could see this um, being more of an issue for farmers, uh, but potentially even next year, um, just you know, as an idea, feel free to disagree. Okay, that's incredible. Thank you, thank you very much. So Edgar, what can you tell us about what's happening in Brazil now on the challenges of COVID? Well, as an exporter and having a different model of business with our Four Seasons project, Capricorn has been impacted in several ways. And Four Seasons, when I say it means that we are with the farmers uh, around the year sharing practices on planting, fertilizing, all the good practices in harvesting, post-harvesting and quality control and sell, selling their coffees, you know, but um, so that we have to make sure that we can supply the coffees to our, to our 28 countries. But this has been especially difficult now in these COVID days, but we cannot stop because, you know, coffee does not wait. So if we wait for, for the, for, to go to the fields, you know, the maturation will speed up and we will lose this window of cherries that we use for producing honeys and, and fully washed. So we have these farm partners that are very small. We have 380 um, farms in the, having three hectares each in Archipionado and also 120 different farms in North Chernobyl. These are in Paraná state. And also we have farms in um, Sao Paulo state. But uh, most of them, of, of these ones are in mountainous areas and uh, they rely heavily on, on labor. So the labor is a problem. We have you know, suggested them not to hire people above 50 years old so that they you know, bring more risk with the pandemic. And uh, But we have to remember also that uh, most of the workers that work in the fields in, in coffee, you know, are old people. Um, so there is being a, a, a shortage in, ter in, in terms of labor in, um, in Brazil. Uh, we also had to, to create at the beginning a booklet, you know, a booklet you know, sharing, you know, all these informations about, um, about COVID and how to help them, you know, to protect employees when they are transporting people on the farm or or how to maintain a, you know, a certain distance. Cause you know, all, all Latins, we are very, you know, we touch, we kiss. And so we had to tell them, you know, not to, to be so close and even, you know, keep their items when they are harvesting, not, you know, sharing buckets or, or plastic covers and anything. Um, so th this was something we did at the beginning, um, how to clean tractors, you know, the vehicles that they use, you know, uh, but, um, but ha ha harvest has started in many regions in Brazil. We, we have 30 different ones. And, um, and our harvest starts in April and then goes up to December. So some areas will be more affected because they started earlier, you know, earlier than the others. Maybe people starting in September will be not so um, affected. And uh, also heard a lot about um, some of these farms. You know, they were asking me, should I invest in quality? 
should I invest in specialty coffee? It's what Carl is saying, you know, has, has just said. Um, and I told them, yes, please, you know, you, we need specialty coffee and um, this will bring your, 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 your revenues up because um, if you produce only the commodity coffees, be, we are exporters of specialty coffees. So the project I have with you is for specialty coffee. So I have no coffee to sell. So we've been telling them and, and, and supporting them that you know the coffees will be bought and they they cannot uh, they do not have to uh, to worry. But we have had more than a thousand deaths a day already in Brazil. And we had a thousand two hundred the past days. But um, um, as Carl mentioned, this also in terms of the the rural areas are more secluded. Um, and I think that June and July will be worse in Brazil. So I think we will have more and more cases coming. So maybe August, September, we will see, you know, less um, things happening. Um, we also are constructing and finishing our uh, new uh, Capricornio Coffee's industrial park. We had shortage in labor because of all these people that, uh, you know, the companies were not allowing them to go and, and, and finish what they had. Uh, and we see that uh, many people have lost their jobs because we have kept all our employees and we are also hiring for the, for the new warehouse. And I have never received so many emails in my life for job positions. I think, you know, many people have lost their jobs and they're trying hard to find, you know, anything that they can find now. So it's, it's you know, Brazil has been helping uh, people so the, the ones that are in, in special need, giving them a small amount of money. Um, but we see that uh, the unemployment rate will grow in, 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 in the near future. Uh, I'm doing home office. I've been taking care of my parents for the past, you know, 70 days. And, uh, and I was talking to Rick before we started the conference and I, had, I have never stayed so much in Brazil in the past 20 years. You know, events canceled, you know, traveling prohibited. I love to be home, but I'm starting to to miss my coffee friends. And I also have a roastery and um, my roastery Bravo Cafe is also going through hard times because we sell a lot of coffees to um, food service restaurants and, and, and supermarkets. And, you know, the, this drop of 30%, I know, not sure if these numbers are, are real, but we we are feeling a lot, you know, because of uh, the home consumption well, in the first month, like April and March, they were still, you know, high and people were maybe because of the panic, they went to the supermarkets and bought, but now it has reflected, you know, people, I think they have stocks of coffee at home. Uh, and let's see if the demand, you know, will go back to what they were, you know, pre-virus. Uh, I'm not sure about that. And many shops close in the country. I'm sad about that. Okay, well, thank you very much for that information also and now we're going to ask Ezekiel Batista the information on his English is, is more or less so we're going to be I'm going to, I'll ask him in Spanish eh, Ezekiel entonces que problemas se presentaron con el COVID-19 allá en, en tu sector hola Damián Ahí está. Eh, a todos buenos días este Bueno, en el, aquí donde nosotros, en, en Panamá, uno de los problemas más graves eh, tiene que ver con la mano de obra. Trabajamos con la mayoría de los trabajadores para cuidar y mantener las fincas son indígenas. Así que es uno de los problemas más graves que tenemos, el, pocos trabajadores para cuidar las fincas. Ok, so what Ezekiel is saying then is that one of the biggest problems they have has to do with uh, the labor having enough workers, they usually work with the Nobe Indians and, or First Nation Nobes in the area. They're the ones that do a lot of the harvesting and farm work in the area. But they, uh, with this problem, it's been hard to get enough workers to maintain the farms. Continuing? Is it good? Have you más? También? Sí, otro, otro. Otro, otro problema también eh, que ha venido con el, con el COVID-19 también es eh, que muchos contratos para la venta de café se han suspendido, se han dejado para después o, o inclusive muchos se han perdido, o sea, han, han suspendido contratos que tenían con algunos cafetaleros aquí en Panamá. 
Okay. So here's another problem that they had is that some of the contracts that they've had for selling the coffee out has been postponed or even canceled outright right. due to the fact that the coffee sales in, in Europe in particular have, have come to a standstill. So that affected them greatly. Okay. Y un, un tercer problema que también hemos tenido, por ejemplo, para exportar, para las exportaciones, todo el trámite que conlleva una exportación con aduanas, con, con las navieras y todo esto está muy lento, así que el trámite para una exportación ahora mismo es bastante, bastante lento. Ok. And there's a third problem, and he's not kidding here, is that the, with this problem, so the getting all the paperwork done, government permits and all that stuff to get the coffee out, out of port has just been at a standstill and been extremely frustrating. And he's not to kid, it's the truth. Okay. Está bien ahí, Ezequiel. Muy bien. Okay, entonces we'll go to question number two then. And let's, um, okay, we're back to you, Green Pea. What can you tell us, please, about how you met these terrible challenges that you've been facing and with what success rate? There was uh, finding a way to deliver coffee uh, at home. Like for example, uh, Question Coffee as social enterprise, uh, teaching customers to make coffee at home uh, through social media adapting takeaway only in the cafe uh, or social distance for customers and searching for new platform like Aribaba uh, to find a new market uh, for coffee. Like here, for example, uh, in the first week of May, uh, Gorilla Cafe uh, sells happen here in May and more company will join uh, that uh, Alibaba in coming months. Oh. And uh, the second one, uh, we was improve the cooperation and good relationship with everyone who is involved in the coffee production uh, to mitigate together the negativity impact caused by COVID-19 and keep have ongoing uh, effective conversation. And um, the, the other one is uh, government of Rwanda has been very supportive uh, during this uh, COVID-19 outbreak uh, in terms of providing food for the essential needs, like essential needs is like, uh, like hand sanitizer, like soap, like mask. Uh, for the low class people and lowering the fuel costs. So which has been helpful to allow Rwandan coffee farmers in terms of transportation and uh, more needs to be done. So uh, what um, our government was looking forward with partner, with NGOs, with um, private sector, so uh, in coming month, they are going to allow um, motorcycle will be back in operations, like the buses, like bicycle in this, uh, the first June 2020. So which means first June, it's on Monday next week. Yeah. Oh, that's good news. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, the Queen. And so now, um, Carl. How have you been overcoming the challenges that, that COVID brought on? Well, I don't have I don't have a whole lot to add here. Um, yeah. Honestly, most of what's been what I've been seeing been going on is, is pretty reactive. It's just kind of taking what's what's coming at us, uh, just doing what we can. And I mentioned that all of this has been really softened by the extraordinarily high local price of coffee in Colombian pesos. Um, so that, that's been all right. Uh, a lot of people are, are selling on forward contracts and of course it's not have anything to do with the, the, the high-end specialty market, but um, the FNC and, and some other 
related organizations have opened up the possibility of, of forward selling uh, commodity grade coffee, of course, uh, based on, you know, in, in, at a certain time in the future, if you have a later harvest for the, the price right now, or, or if you were able to, to fix it a few weeks ago, even better. Uh, so people have been doing that. And yeah, and, and also, you know, the, the pickers coming from small towns, of course, they're not as fast as the pros, but uh, they're getting the job done. So yeah, honestly, you're just kind of waiting and watching around here. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So Edgar, how can you answer um, these challenges that you're facing with the <clears throat> shorted, sh labor shortages and things? Edgar, well, I think we have been so... Yeah, go ahead, Damien. Yeah. No, oh, please do. Um, I think we have been successful with the measures that we have implemented. You know, the, the booklet has been very helpful. You know, our agronomists have visited the farms. You know, they are supporting the farms. Uh, we also have created a, a WhatsApp group so that we have question and, and answer fast to people when they, you know, they are in need and we are not currently visiting that particular farm. Um, we also had here some clients um, you know, asking for the possibility to postpone shipments or, or cancel contracts, but we managed to, to come to a solution together because we know, you know, there is always hedging costs, you know, the, also the dollar, you know, hedging of the dollar and everything. And sometimes even, you know, the dollar hedging and also the euro hedging. So it's not very simple, you know, there are several costs involved, but we managed to find a solution for that. Um, we also donated uh, 3,000 masks to these people so that the, they can that they could use it and, and be more protected. Um, I hope also that uh, we can soon, maybe in two months, go back to our new normal. I hope also that um, during this intense contamination with the virus now in June, July, the port does not stop because this is then a problem because we wouldn't have you no... Know, containers coming and then when we start exporting we might have a shortage in the number in the number of containers we were also um, very worried about the possibility of um, of the lack of jute you know because of a Bangladesh port and and so we we managed to buy our our jute although we use very little of jute we, we prefer the polypropylene bags because of um, you know maintaining quality with the liners then inside we don't like that taste of juice um, when it comes to the coffee. And also a problem we, we've had recently is the um, ice uh, futures falling. So it, when the, 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 we are exporting the coffees, you know, the, these coffees, uh, the producer gets, you know, better prices for this. But if he has to sell coffees that are not specialty in the domestic market, and then, the, then the prices are lower. So this will affect, you know, this year's results. Uh, the dollar, for example, one dollar was 5.3 reais, um, you know, on, on Friday. So it's in, in this, of course, will impact the cost of a few and also the cost of fertilizers. And so it's always um, like a Russian roulette and also a giant ball rolling in, 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 in bringing problems. Um, and we have to, you know, hope that the people continue that this year is a, is, is a year of, um, you know, maybe we won't be ever uh, in the same world, but uh, we have to fight hard for the producers to keep on, you know, uh, trying to produce coffee because um, we've been having a lot of competition with soy, sugar cane and other crops. So being able to help them, you know, main, mainly these small producers that we work with, it's for them to stay, you know, stay at their farms and, and also uh, pay them a good price so that the, you know, the family will be more involved. Kids will go back to the farm and, and to the small states and, and work and continue the legacy of the, of the family. Otherwise, in the future, who is going to supply this um, 300 million bags that we might have uh, in 2050 if the world grows two and a half percent, if it, if it grows one and a half, it's going to be 200 million bags, but we still have, uh, we need producers to produce that. So we need to keep these people. Excellent, now you made some excellent points. So I really like that. The communication and your foresight to understand the need for, uh, to get the younger people back to the farms. That's, yeah, that's absolutely, so this is what we fight every day here, because uh, 
we have to help. We, we have a beautiful case of a, of a farmer. They're very small, one of these that have three hectares. And um, his two kids study agronomy. They drive two hours to go to, to college every, every you know, end of the day because they study at night. And then they drive back you know, two hours more. And next day they work at the farm to help. But we love to, to be you know, part of this project and to love to be with this family because uh, we, they are certainly staying, you know, staying there and continuing you know, to produce coffees. And if they find, and if they're, if they're producing specialty coffees, it's even better because they can get better prices and, and see that it, it compensates to be there. Exactly. Incredible. Thank you. Entonces, Angelito, estamos contigo. Um, ¿Cómo has enfrentado esta situación en este problema de COVID? ¿Y qué has logrado? Bueno, una de las cosas que hemos tenido que hacer es solicitar algunos permisos para con las instituciones aquí en Panamá para poder por lo menos mover a cara a nuestros clientes. Eso es algo que hemos hecho. Okay, you kind of got choppy there. I didn't quite get that. Um, but, uh, estaba un poco roto ahí. No sé si puedes re, repetir tu respeto, por favor. Sí, una de las cosas que hemos tenido que hacer es solicitar algunos permisos aquí en las autoridades en Panamá que nos permitan movilizarnos para por lo menos poder entregar muestras o enviar muestras a nuestros clientes. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, good. What he's saying is that they have to get special permits from the government which allow them to send out samples, copy samples to their clients out, uh, outside of Panamá. That, that's a very important step. Okay, excelente, Quilito. ¿Y qué más? ¿Cómo te fue? Y, y también hemos tenido que organizar el trabajo de la finca con menos personal, pero organizarlo bien para lograr mantener la finca y procesar el capital. Okay. Muy bien. And so, what they had to do that is with less workers, so they had to organize and uh, do some managing uh, skills to kind of juggle the workers around to make sure the farm maintenance was always kept up to date. So that's truly important. And es que como te fue con las muestras, lograste vender tu café siempre. Hemos, sí, logramos enviar las muestras y, y bueno, gran parte del café está vendido y, y ya se envió parte del café, bueno, vamos a lograr y que, bueno, nos aprobaron las muestras y vamos a enviar el siguiente, okay. otro, otro, otra cantidad de café a Europa. Uh, excelente. Ok, thank you. And so, yeah, they were able to get the samples out and that allowed them to sell most of the copy that they had stored up. So, they're still doing some more sales and Zap's actually helping me do some sales also. So, that's excellent. Gracias, Quilito. Muy bien. All right, third question, we return to, uh, to Queen P. Here's a, a nice question. Uh, what can be done to create awareness and really give small farm holders a niche in the specialty coffee market? What can you say, Queen P? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, what we supposed to uh, be done to create awareness, uh, number one is, uh, direct trade should be done. We are supposed to make sure um, uh, there is no like a uh, person side uh, is supposed to be transparent to make sure all the trade done well. The, the, the other one is to encourage small farmers holder to form and join cooperative uh, to facilitate training program. You know, here in Rwanda, uh, we train farmers or coffee producers to grow specialty coffee. Uh, like for example, uh, we have a like NGO Sustainable Growers Rwanda. It's trained the farmers. So it's better uh, to encourage all the coffee producers to join the cooperatives and working together. Uh, the, other, the other topic, um, 
what they're supposed to do, uh, we would carry out of more global coffee conference in the coffee producers country to allow farmers uh, to be the part of conference in the coffee producing country. So which means their input and be aware of everything going in the coffee world. So we supposed uh, organized like even like this one so to make sure and we invite the coffee farmers to join that event. Like uh, for instance, uh, Let's Talk Coffee. Uh, Let's Talk Coffee is a, a global conference organized by Sustainable Harvest Inc. It's annual event. It is a great model for me. So every year it is organized a new uh, a new coffee producing country to bring together all members of the coffee supplier chain. So I think the people who is in Colombia or who is in Brazil, everyone knows uh, that event and some of, of you, you has already uh, attend that event. So in the press, uh, they bring that event in the press to share challenges and hybrid relationship by finding solution that work all uh, the supply chain. So Sustainable Growers Rwanda has hosted a uh, four Let's Talk Coffee program, coffee conference, which hosts farmers, cooperative leaders, government, buyers, losters, and other coffee stakeholders for uh, like three days in Chigari. So like last year, we have hosted uh, Let's Talk Coffee Chigari. So, uh, so we need more events like this one. We need more uh, events like Jump Conference. So we need more events uh, who can put together uh, coffee producers, like to make sure the coffee producers, they will not stay in the village just grown coffee. So it's time to bring them together and meet the buyers so they can have like good relationship, they can discuss, they can know who is drink our coffee, so who is buy our coffee? So that is uh, my my uh, my suggestion. Thank you. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Really, that's that's right. To get the the smaller producers out of the out of the farm and put them in the face of of the buyers. Also, this is what we're happening. What we're doing here in John. Great work. Thank you. And Carl, yeah. what what? What can you say to that question? What can be done to create awareness for the smaller farmers to get in the specialty coffee market a little better? Sure, again, a, a really large, a large question with a very complex answer. Uh, but just to, to take an example, uh, I think one thing that's extremely important would be consumer education. Uh, really, I, I believe the end consumer is the only actor in the supply chain that can really dictate to the rest of us how we need to work in order to keep their business. Um, so I think one of the greatest responsibilities we have is to, to educate consumers as to um, you know, the objective realities for, for producers as well as other supply chain actors um, express in, in real tangible terms the impact of different supply chain configurations and uh, the real impact of the decision that they're making with, with their money on the, on the store shelf uh, in order to, in order to uh, create the, the economic uh, obligation to, to work in a way that, that uh, honors and empowers and, and uh, compensates smallholders uh, you know, in, a, in a way that's relative to the value created. No, that's great. So education is key, right? It really is. Thank you, Carl. Yep. Right. Okay, hey, Edgar, but um, what can be done? Now, you're already exporting in the specialty coffee business. What do you think, what more can be done to help promote the smaller farmers, not maybe just in Brazil, but in other parts? What, what do you think? I think we have to continue to focus on the promotion of this uh, of these coffees. Um, at Capricornio, we focus on smallholders, I've mentioned, and I travel usually around 180 days promoting them. This year will not be the case, you know, I cannot travel that much, 
but we are, you know, organizing several ways to continue promoting this farm, you know, organizing, you know, small events, you know, bringing these producers to talk to the clients so that they, you know, connect and, and, and see the, the, the value of, of the support they give to these people. Uh, we also work close here in Brazil with um, women producers. Um, we export coffees from 20 women, you know, they are farm owners, but they are farm owners, the ones that pick the coffees themselves. It's not, you know, women that um, own the farm, but don't work in, in coffee. So they, uh, they go there, they have their feuds, they do selective picking, they, they exchange work. So one goes to the, to the farm of the other. And so if one works three days for the other, she will go and work and, and pay back the, the, the days she was, you know, selective picking coffees. Um, um, so we also have been uh, building this African, the actually covert patios with African bats for them, uh, with the support of our clients. Because here in Brazil, in the area where we are with this project, it's more of a Costa Rica's um, weather. It's really, it rains more during the winter uh, and it's more humid. So the, the uh, covert patios and, and with the African bats help them to, you know, go to bed at night and, and sleep and not to worry that, you know, the coffee is under, under the rain, you know, uh, in, in the middle of the night. So we've worked successfully with our clients, you know, getting funds to build these African um, beds for them. And also, you know, I think with this pandemic, we, we have to be always, you know, thinking and in, 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 in what else, you know, what else can I do? Um, this has helped me realize that I could expand the borders of Capricornio. Capricornio uh, works in Sao Paulo and Paraná state. Um, we mainly work in, in six different regions in these two states. Uh, and, that, and now I have a new project called Beyond. It's Beyond uh, Grand Cru Coffees. And we will be exporting micro lots, you know, coffees above 88 points from all these 30 different producing regions in Brazil. You know, coffees with special preparations, uh, coffee with fermentation and all these amazing coffees. You know, I love to tell stories of small farms on coffee. And I like to, I love to coffee hunt. I love to, to show these amazing coffees when I travel, uh, when I'm doing cuppings uh -huh. around the world. So the, pande the pandemic has made me think, you know, why only Paraná and Sao Paulo as Brazilian, as a Brazilian coffee ambassador, that there is much more that I can show. So I'm like expanding now to a more, you know, um, vast uh, presence of ours, uh, helping other people, you know, not only where we are. We, there are so many people that need to be promoted. I don't like to see when I go to a cafe in, in a country and I see they have this coffee. I go to the next cafe, they have the same farm. We have in Brazil 300,000 coffee farms and how many farms that are in the world. So I, I would love to, 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 you know, hear more stories of more people. So the more I can promote, the more I will work for it. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, thank you. Good. And Carl, now we've heard about you know events and edu um, getting things happening. What, what, what do you? What more can we do to create awareness for the smaller farmer? We being who? Okay. Um, us. Okay. Small farmer. Or what? What do you think? Let me see. How can I say that better? You're. Um, you're already exporting coffee. And uh, is there any other way or how can we expand on awareness for the smaller farmer, to the, to the consumer? What do you think? Well, I think preparing and, and uh, offering as much information as we can down the supply chain. I mean, from, from the origin country, uh, all, all we can do is, is offer as much information and, uh, and real context as we can to the next link in our supply chain. Um, try to motivate our supply chains to, to transmit this information and these realities that we are seeing on the ground in our own communities up to the, the consumer level and uh, try to select supply chains and, and work with, with individuals that share these, these values that we have uh, in order to access the end consumer, who, like I mentioned, is, is the one that's making the real decisions here uh, and the, the word transparency comes up that, that I use quite often and I think this is quite valuable and important uh, but only in the case that there's proper context given to really understand with with benchmarks uh, and metrics to be able to interpret 
the numbers being thrown around uh, to be able to really understand the, the reality based on, on numbers that cannot be manipulated um, rather than uh, you know, buzzwords and verbiage that can kind of be used to, to create any kind of message. Okay, great, thank you, it's great. Uh, the Ezequiel, uh, the misma pregunta, eh? uh, por ejemplo, para decir, ¿qué crees que puede pasar? Que deben ser los productores pequeños para despertar el interés y tener una oportunidad de negociar en este segmento de cafés especiales. Y deben una, ser los productores. Sí, uno, una de las cosas que pienso que hay que hacer es eh, a veces cambiar la actitud, de querer seguir manteniendo tal vez una misma variedad o, o un mismo proceso y hoy es pequeño. Ok. A little bit broken up there, but basically the idea is what Ezekiel is saying is that it's necessary for some of the farmers to upgrade the quality of their farms. That would mean changing their attitude towards traditional farming practices and processing practices. And of course, I've seen that lots too. Um, I remember working with one fellow, for instance, he was 70 years old, all his life working on a coffee farm, and we talked about pruning, and he says, well, what's that? I, I never pruned a coffee plant in my life. <laughs> he was 70 years old. You know, so that kind of thing. Helping people understand the newer ways of coffee farming is always much better. ¿Qué más puede decir, Kielito, entonces, ayudando en este sector? Bueno, también algo que se puede hacer o que podemos hacer los productores pequeños y necesitamos hacer es algunas, tal vez, alianzas con personas que nos ayuden a promover el producto. Porque no siempre los productores pequeños tienen la posibilidad de ofrecer el, el, la calidad o el, el buen café que tienen. Entonces se necesita unirse o, o conseguir alianzas con, con empresas o con personas como ustedes que hagan algún tipo de promoción para que las muestras, por ejemplo, o, o parte del café que muchos productores pequeños aquí en Panamá producen, lleguen hasta los tostadores o a los consumidores finales y prueben el excelente café que se puede producir o que puede producir un productor pequeño. Ok, muy bien, gracias. Entonces, what he's saying basically here is that the smaller producers don't have the same financial advantage as other larger farms or producers or people a long time in the company. So they need to make alliances, perhaps like uh, as mentioned earlier, a direct trade, a direct, direct trading, this kind of thing, making connections with buyers directly, uh, or unite even with smaller farmers like uh, the three was mentioning about uh, the co-ops and alliances. Now it's easier said than done in this part of the world because some of these uh, cooperatives um, don't really cooperate. <laughs> Sometimes there can be problems in that, that area, trust issues. But the idea of, we just can't do it alone, is what Ezekiel is saying. So it's necessary to make clients, perhaps with buyers, direct trading right off the bat. And that would really be a big help. Okay. And so, uh, Ezekiel, la última pregunta, entonces, um, ¿por qué deberían los compradores de café y trocedores, como tenemos, por ejemplo, en el uh, otro panel, ¿por qué deben comprar de café de productores pequeños o comprar café tuyo? ¿Qué puede decir? Bueno, porque el esfuerzo de los productores pequeños a veces es difícil reconocerlo. Y, y por eso es la principal razón por la que pienso que a los produ a productores pequeños se les debe comprar el café. Eh, principalmente el esfuerzo de un productor pequeño es muy, gra muy grande, muy alto, y, y debe tener una recompensa. Y estarían muy agradecidos los productores pequeños de que se dé a conocer su producto y que se, alguien se interese en comprarlo. Ok. So there's one mention, uh, one reason that Ezekiel's mentioning that there's so many smaller producers work so hard for an excellent product. They really do have wonderful coffees. And, um, you know, it's, it's worth trying. You know, just see what these people have to offer because they work so hard on their farms to try to, uh, to, to earn a living. So, okay, Ezequiel, ¿qué más? Um, ¿Alguno? ¿Qué más puede decirnos sobre el asunto de en este tema? Perdón. 
eh, sí, también, también es, es triste que muchos productores pequeños también, eh, por no poder ofrecer productos, quedan en manos a veces de personas que, o de empresas que abusan tal vez de los precios y de las necesidades económicas. Eso pienso que también sería muy, muy bueno que, de, que clientes se interesaran en comprar el café de productores así, productores que que no son grandes y que necesitan mucha ayuda. Mm, okay, so here's another point that's very true is um, uh, some farmers are unfortunately taken advantage of in difficult economic situations. But, um, they get abused economically by buyers or intermediaries or even larger companies. And so they get offered a paid very low prices. And so to evade that, I mean, they want to upgrade their coffee, do some better sales. So, um, what the farmers are asking is a good price for a good coffee, basically. Is it? ¿Y cuál otro, qué otro punto tiene Felipe sobre esto? De calidad de café, ¿qué puedes decir? Bueno, en cuanto a la calidad, de hecho, por ejemplo, aquí en Panamá hay muchos productores pequeños con muy buena calidad, con muy buenas variedades, eh, que cuando se prueban los cafés de, de esos productores, los, muchos clientes quedan asombrados de, de tal vez no saber que, que tenían eh, tan buenas semillas o tan buenas calidades en su fin. Recompensar el, el duro trabajo y la buena calidad que se... Que se Okay, we kind of we kind of lost you there, but I, I like the idea of what you're saying is that the quality of the coffees are very good in their area. There are some wonderful geishas that the smaller farmers have. Um, geisha, pacamaras, and caturra, capuais, things of that nature, also others. But um, we also do a lot of different type of processing. ¿Qué otro clase de procesos hacen? En sus, en sus, aquí, aquí en Panamá se, se hace mucho proceso eh, lavado, pero también eh, últimamente mucho natural, honey, y se está probando también con muchas fermentaciones ahora para poder ofrecer un mercado diferente que también se interesa en alguna fermentación distinta. Entonces también ya se está probando mucho eh, hacer geisha o pacamara con alguna fermentación de, de sin oxígeno con oxígeno de diferentes formas para poder ofrecer un, el producto un poco un poco mejor muy bien muchas gracias entonces so he was making a, the different styles of even processing there their geisha pacamaras like I mentioned earlier but they could do wash they can do honeys they can do naturals and even doing anaerobic so different types of processing with uh, fermentations okay so a lot of variety in smaller farmers, and I'm sure that's true everywhere. So let's go back here, eh? and so Edgar, um, a little bit of promotion for Capricornio coffees. What can we do for? Well, um, I think I ask people to continue exploring Brazil, uh, continue enjoying their cups of specialty coffee coming from you know these small farms who need so much support. Um, you know, people can contact us for samples of these naturals, honeys, you know, the fully washed coffees and also the, the ones with special preparations that we do. We will be glad to show you, you know, how amazing these coffees are. I also ask people to pray for Brazil and all and for all my other deer producing countries. You know, coffee farmers are very simple people, very humble. And um, every year they, they have a different problem. One year is climate change, one year is drought. The other one is too much rain during harvest. You know, one year is low prices, and now we have this pandemic, you know, that is, that has become a nightmare, you know. Um, so pray for us all. I think we will also pray for all our friends, you know, in the world. And um, we also have been going through very, you know, uh, intense, severe political instability, and this will also contribute for, you know, making this year even more difficult. So I think we, we have to work together and... Um, but uh, we coffee people here in Brazil, and I think uh, all over the world, we continue to have hope. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much for that. 
And Carl, here's a chance to, um, to explain a bit how great is Cedro Alto. Why buy coffee from Cedro Alto? Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah, maybe like, why should, okay. did you get my question? Oh, gotcha, gotcha there. Okay. Um, so let, let's see, I wouldn't say everyone should buy coffee from Cedro Alto, as strange as that sounds. Uh, I would, I'd like to change this into more of an uh, if, if then uh, kind of equation. If, if you value complete price transparency and specific context, from the farm gate to the roaster door, if you're interested in working with an organization that exists to meet the needs of producers, not use producers to meet their own needs, and if you're interested in supporting a model that prioritizes producer stability, empowerment, and independence, then Cesarato may be able to add value to your organization, and we welcome the ability to, to try. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I've got. If those things are interesting, then then here we are. Great answer. Thank you so much. Okay, so last word go to Green Pea. So why should green bean buyers and roasters buy from you, from your company? Okay, so we should buy uh, green beans uh, from small farmer or me, I should buy the green beans because uh, it's a good way to establish and strengthen the relationship between coffee producers and buyers by connecting them. So uh, this uh, allow them to negotiate price directly, talk about quality expectations and have shared understanding. So when they having like conversation and when they go direct to buyers, they see and they recognize the hard working of the, the coffee producers. So uh, like for example, there are some companies uh, buy uh, direct to farmers like Equita. Uh, we have also Sisters Coffee. We have Correctivo and question coffee, and there, there are many. So who buy direct to the uh, small farmers? So like, for example, maybe a uh, question coffee as company who buy direct from farmers uh, is provide the retail market to the farmers and promote coffee consumption. So this is like the good key of buying coffee, uh, green beans to the roasters from uh, from uh, farmers. And this uh, question of coffee also uh, promote coffee consumption through education customers about specialty coffee. Normally uh, they do training on uh, hotels, like five star hotels, like small coffee shops, like uh, we do the master class. So all this it's that's why they buy, they buy the green uh, from, uh, from buyers. So it means, uh, and they teach and discuss about quality of expectation uh, directly uh, with cooperatives managers. Okay. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. So now we're going to uh, continue the other part of the program with the second panel. Okay, so thank you all for your excellent um, participation. And you really helped a lot in our in our event. Thank you all. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you thanks doing? everyone. Uh, you know, we've uh, we're running uh, so long because there's so much valuable insights being shared. Uh, there's also a lot of questions coming in, uh, you know, fr from the audience. Uh, before just moving to the next panel, maybe we can just address like one or two of them. Uh, we'll we'll try, try to just get through it a little quickly uh, to respect the time of, of the next panel. Um, one question I see is from Chisato Kobayashi. Uh, they're developing a blockchain-based solution. Um, it's encouraging to hear from Perpet uh, Perpetuate that people are trying new channels like Alibaba. 
do you think farmers are willing to try something new like you know blockchain or new channels like that and what's the best way to reach them uh the farmers to to work with them um any one can uh address that uh, uh during this uh time of uh, covid-19 and lockdown you know everything was closed there is no transport airport was closed so there is no way of selling their coffee or their products so if we will have or we will initiate to have more uh platform like aribaba the coffee producers it will be like a great a job for them to sell their coffee and it would be easy for each and everyone to buy directly without uh putting the money of transportation of shipping and uh so it would be easy for them thank you okay thank thanks uh anyone else want to add anything to that carl yeah um i think if if someone is uh is in a desperate situation they'll try absolutely anything to improve that situation but uh i think great care needs to be taken uh in in suggesting these kind of of fixes to producers um to ensure that it that these are things that are really going to be solutions from them and not just get them uh tied up in in something that uh they're not set up to be able to handle uh just something that i think that should be kept in mind because if you're really hurting and struggling to put food on the table you do anything yeah interesting I, and then we need to have the empathy for that producer to know um will this channel or will this new approach actually be something they can do do they have the you know do they have a smartphone if it, if it's a blockchain app or something so understanding that is is a big part and it varies from from region to region that's for sure um thanks uh just checking uh if there's any other questions um actually this is for you as well carl so th this will be the last question i guess um from luis velez how is fnc supporting growers right now and he he probably will know better than me you're, <laughs> you're closer to them over there in in, in chapinero alto uh I don't know exactly all the programs that they have going on. Uh they're 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 so big and doing so many things. Um but what I what I do think they're doing uh that is quite positive at the moment is keeping the the base price. And uh, for those who don't know the FNC and the the co-ops that are that are affiliated with the FNC uh, have a have a purchase guarantee. They will receive all the coffee no matter what uh at the base price that they set. So effectively there's there's a very hard price floor in Colombia the FNC sets that and it's generally um you know the the physical Colombia commodity grade price uh minus you know a, a small amount for costs and it's not that much they're they're at like over 80% of the um average physical FOB price for Colombian coffee right now so Uh, it's it's highly unlikely that farmers are going to be selling for much less than that so that's this is an incredible benefit they have uh, as well as the uh, forward contracts they're calling them futuros but they're actually forward it's a commitment to hand over coffee at a later date for today's price uh, allowing farmers to essentially lock in a price that they think is is good to be able to ensure that they're going to sell for a profit no matter what at a later date so i think those are quite valuable and i'm sure they're doing a lot of other stuff like they're they're looking at a mechanical harvesting like these um it's like a, a motorized stick that like shakes the tree and i mean i mean they're pilot projects but um you know they're always in 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 investing and investigating you know, different different alternatives that's what i've got yeah. you know that's great it's it's good to hear about the ford contracts it helps to hedge some of that uh you know currency exchange risk um so that's uh that's great thanks for sharing that